Thank you. Hi. Thanks for meeting with me again today. I'm so glad to see you. Over the past few videos, I've shared several introspective exercises that you can do alone at home. I hope you've tried and benefited from them. Today, I want to address a sensitive topic that you can explore with others in your social circle. Communication through touch. When thinking of communication skills, we mainly focus on talking and body language, but rarely on the sense of touch. However, research shows that touch provides a far more important and complex form of communication and expressing emotion than most of us realize. Numerous studies have proven that physical touch is the foundational element of human development and culture. From the moment we're born, we need touch to grow, learn, survive, and thrive. Touch has been shown to release the hormone oxytocin, which can help our bodies maintain their defenses and decrease anxiety, depression, hyperactivity, inattention, stress hormones, and cortisol levels. Scientific research correlates physical touch with decreased violence, greater trust, economic gain, decreased disease, a stronger immune system, improved team dynamics, emotional intimacy, greater learning engagement, and overall well-being. Researcher Laura Guerrero, co-author of Close Encounters, Communication and Relationships, notes, we feel more connected to someone if they touch us. Touch is our primary language of compassion. Incorporating touch with other forms of communication will increase our connectedness to our social circle and benefit their well-being as well as ours. According to Rick Chillett in Psychology Today, recent studies have found that seemingly insignificant touches yield bigger tips for waitresses and that people shop and buy more if they're touched by a store greeter and strangers are more likely to help someone if a touch accompanies the request. While all that's true, how did it make you feel when I mentioned that a store greeter or stranger might touch you? If it bothered you, then you're not alone. Touch is a language that we instinctively know how to use, but it's a skill we take for granted and that can lead to touch deprivation. Need for touch does not diminish as we age. But because our culture in the United States discourages adults touching one another, except in our most intimate relations, we find ourselves being touched less and less as we age. By adulthood, we think of most touching in a sexual context, depriving us of one of the most basic human needs. We live in a touch-phobic society, and we're not used to touching strangers and even touching our friends can seem awkward. As humans, we're wired to connect with other people on a basic physical level. Denying communication through touch deprives us of some of life's greatest joys and deepest comforts. We become isolated within our workstations, portable electronics and conflicting schedules Add that to the social and legal restrictions over physical contact in our schools and workplaces, and that means we become starved for touch throughout our day-to-day -day life. To foster a safe social environment and a climate of healthy communication, we need to practice socially appropriate platonic touching. In American culture, our society promotes the belief that Men can never be entirely trusted when it comes to physical contact. The news media daily reports the crimes and bad behavior of a handful of men, and it seems to confirm that men don't know how to physically connect without resorting to sexual advances, and they can't control themselves. This creates fear in women of a man's potentially dangerous behavior. Meanwhile, men are anxious to show women they can feel safe in their company. To meet society's demand for safety, 
Men are forced to prove their trustworthiness by giving up physical touch. Men are told, don't touch her unless she touches you first. Never touch a woman you work with. Be professional. You can shake her hand, but don't get too close. But men need gentle platonic touch in their lives just as much as women do. The result is that men become physically and emotionally isolated. They're cut off from the human physical contact that is proven to reduce stress, encourage self-esteem, and create community. Listen to this brief biography of Mark Green, author of How a Lack of Touch is Destroying Men. It illustrates the life of a boy growing up in America. Let me know if it resonates with you. As a young child and as a teenager, contact between myself and others simply didn't happen unless it came in the form of roughhousing or unwelcome bullying. My mother backed off from contact with me very early on, in part, I think, due to her upbringing. I can only guess that in her parents' house, physical touch was something for toddlers, but not for children past a certain age. Add to that the fact that my father was absent due to my parents' divorce and years of work overseas, and it meant I grew up without being held or touched. This left me with huge insecurities about human contact. I was well into my 20s before I could put my arm around a girl I was dating without first getting drunk. To this day, I remain uncertain about where and how to approach contact with people, even those I consider close friends. It's not that I can't do it, it's just that it remains awkward, odd, as if we all feel like we're doing something slightly off. This inability to comfortably connect through touch has left men emotionally isolated contributing to rampant rates of alcoholism, depression, and abuse. And what if the lack of platonic touch is causing some men to be far too aggressive toward women? Distrust leaves us uncertain about touching another person in a gentle platonic manner, so we decide that we must get into a relationship to satisfy our need for touch. We become desperate for that relationship and will settle for the first rather than the best that is available. Add to that the demands of one person meeting all our needs for touch, and that relationship can quickly become suffocating and strained. If men could diffuse their need for physical connection across a much wider set of platonic relationships, it could alleviate the strain on those significant relationships and give them space to find the best match rather than the most convenient. Experts recommend letting off steam a little at a time when we're frustrated so we don't bottle everything up until we explode. If we learn to spread our need for touch over a large group of friends and family members, perhaps we would be less likely to jump into sexual encounters before we're ready to commit to the consequences. American men have many reasons why they may not be comfortable with touch, including fear of being labeled as sexually inappropriate by women, living in a homophobic culture, they don't want to risk any hint of being sexual toward children, and they don't want to lose their status as a strong leader by being physically gentle, and they don't want to deal with rejection when they do reach out. Learning how to express platonic love and affection through touch is a vast and remarkable change that is central to having a rich and full life. So what can we do to alleviate the fears within our social circle, but still provide the human platonic touch that we need? I've got some practical actions you can take. We're gonna start with notice and name. This will make us more aware of our need for touch communication and how we can fill that need. First, visualization. Close your eyes, take a deep breath, and relax. Picture in your mind a social situation that regularly occurs for you. It could be networking, working out at the gym, bowling, or meeting friends at a restaurant or bar. How do you greet the men? 
Is it different from greeting women? Do you shake hands or fist bump or hug? What other platonic touching happens during the gathering? Do you pat on the shoulder or hug people? Do some of your friends touch more than others? Culture and community is more than just your social circle, so the next time you're in a public place, take a few moments to watch the people around you and observe how often and in what ways they touch. Is it only couples that touch, or do you see family members or friends touching? What do you notice about the people who touch the most? Do they seem happier? What about the people who don't touch anybody else? How do they seem to feel? Write or talk with a friend about what you've noticed and name what you've observed. After this notice and name exercise, I want you to take action because action is the key to success. Gradually increase the number of times you platonically touch the people in your social circle. As you do this, notice how you feel and how your friends and family react to more frequent touching. Let me know in the comments or send me a private message here on YouTube to let me know what happens. If the research and scientific studies are correct, you should feel happier and closer to the people you touch more frequently, and they should feel the same. When you're consistent and frequent with how you connect through platonic touch with all the people in your social circle and the strangers that you meet, people will naturally be more attracted to you. It won't seem as if you're flirting or overly attentive to one person if you spread the love around evenly. However, if you do want to start flirting with a particular lady, we'll cover that in a future video. Please take a moment now and subscribe. I'll be uploading at least one video each week with occasional bonus videos. Post your comments below and let me know what you want to talk about in upcoming videos. Your questions and comments are important to me. Communication will keep this channel active and help us build a connected community. Thanks for meeting with me. We'll talk again soon. Mm. Joe, you freshen this up? <laughs>